When you think of the most important statistics in a basketball game, the points scored will always come at number one. But a pretty close second, a stat that is an essential part of the game, are rebounds. A rebound is when a player retrieves the ball after a missed field goal, and this statistic is mostly dominated by a power forward. A power forward is known for being big and strong, that can shoot from many spots on the court and hit most of them. So here are the 25 greatest power forwards in NBA history. At number 25 is Tom Chambers. Chambers is followed by NBA champion Kevin Love, Rudy Tomjanovich, a proficient scorer in LaMarcus Aldridge, and great defender Bobby Jones. Amari Stoudemire would prove to be a beast in his prime, and Sean Kemp led the Sonics to the finals. Next up is Chris Webber. Chris Webber is mainly known for his postseason failures. At Michigan, he called that costly timeout, and in Sacramento, he got rigged out of the finals because of the Game 6 where the Lakers shot 27 free throws in the fourth quarter. But he was nevertheless one of the most dynamic power forwards in the early 2000s. Another dynamic player was the number one overall pick, Blake Griffin. Griffin is known for his monstrous poster dunks. These next couple players played in an older era. First up is Vern Mickelson, who was listed as one of the first ever power forwards. He just happened to be one of the best ones, scoring over 10,000 points. Jerry Lucas was even better, averaging 15 rebounds per game his whole career. Then at number 14 is Draymond Green. If you looked at Green's raw stats, it would look, well, mediocre at best. But it's really the fact that Draymond was a great defender on a great team that puts him this high. Green was paired up with Klay Thompson and Steph Curry and the Warriors, where they'd win four championships. Anyway, Dolph Shays earns the next spot on this list. Dolph ended up being one of the best mid-range shooters in the 50s. At his retirement, he led the league in scoring, and a Hall of Famer would lead the Syracuse Nationals to an NBA title. After that is another Hall of Famer, this time from Spain, Pau Gasol. Pau Gasol was a pretty good player on the Grizzlies, but once he joined the Lakers, he turned into a star. He would both score and rebound with efficiency, winning two titles with Kobe Bryant. You gotta double him, you cannot leave him one on one. Bryant for the lead, misses Gasol, backs it in with five tenths of a second remaining. Lakers by one. And the Thunder call. Next up is Dennis Rodman. Rodman is known as one of the most elite rebounders and defenders in league history. On top of that, he won five titles of the Bulls and Pistons. It's just unfortunate that Rodman's legacy will really only be known for the antics he has done in his career. Rodman wanted an illegal defense, that's what he's upset about it. He's still talking about it. Rodman sits and he's gone! Finally, we're in the top 10, and the famous star with a unibrow, Anthony Davis, will take the next spot on the list. Anthony Davis, although still young in his career, has already made some great achievements. Of course, his biggest one is an NBA championship in 2020. This was thanks to LeBron James joining him on the Lakers to win it all. But the second achievement is definitely his defensive talent. AD is known for his shot blocking skills. Dinwiddie, veering, kicking, AC gets blocked, Davis. Look at that, he goes up, he's well off his feet, gets the block, comes back down, tips it back out. At number 9 is Elvin Hayes. In Elvin Hayes' rookie year, he led the entire league in scoring but didn't win the MVP award from it. It turns out that 1969 was his best shot at one, since from then on out, Hayes would never win an MVP. He recorded over 27,000 points, 16,000 rebounds, and best of all, won an NBA title on the Bullets. Another NBA champ was Bob Pettit. During his era, Pettit would dominate the league with two MVP awards and lead the St. Louis Hawks to four title appearances. In the only season he won it all, Pettit scored 50 points to cap off Game 6. Next up at number 6 is Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale was part of the Celtics' Big 3 during the 80s. 
In his first five years, he was a bench player who won multiple six-man awards. But once Mikhail got the starting role, he wouldn't disappoint, posting up defenders and scoring over 22 points per game. With teammates Larry Bird and Robert Parrish, the big man won three championships. A couple years later, another big man who would dominate the league was Charles Barkley. Nicknamed the Round Mound of Rebound, Barkley only stood at 6'6", six six, but would still prove to be one of the strongest players in the league. Charles was a beast on the glass who scored 22 points nightly from it. And his 1993 season was the best of all, where he won the MVP and made the finals. The pull up from 16. Oh, he really pulled the string on that. He had a horrible shooting game against the Rockets in Game 7. Charles Barkley just out of control. Unfortunately, Barkley will go down as one of the best players to never win a championship. We're down to the final five, and we'll start it off with Kevin Garnett. Talent-wise, Garnett could be at the top of this list. KG was a beast who dominated virtually all categories. His fierce and competitive mentality would get himself into fights and trash-talking on a nightly basis. However, the one bad part about Garnett is that he spent the prime of his career on, well, the worst team in the league, the Timberwolves. They were so bad, the only time Minnesota made the playoffs in 27 years was with Garnett. Thankfully, he finally won a title when he moved to Boston. Anything's possible. Anything's possible! Number 4 is a player still in the prime of his career, Giannis Antetokounmpo. The Greek freak is a true underdog story. He started playing on the streets of Greece and was soon drafted to the Bucks. As a somewhat overlooked player, Giannis bulked up and became a two-time MVP and finals champion. And these are his stats as of 2023, when he's still in his prime. The power forward is known for his freakish athleticism and dominance in the paint. But number 3 didn't only dominate the paint, but he was also a great shooter. That was Dirk Nowitzki, the 7-foot maverick born in Germany. Like I said, Nowitzki revolutionized his positions in the early 2000s thanks to his 3-point abilities. But sadly, Dirk would play on a Mavericks team with minimal talent. He went many, many years without making the finals, but a 2011 Cinderella run brought him to the promised land. As heavy underdogs, Dirk pulled off the miracle. The emotions of Dirk Nowitzki, what he's always dreamed of. With an MVP and championship, Nowitzki has made his name into the best European in NBA history. We're now at number two, and next up is Karl Malone. The mailman will mostly be remembered for being the leading scorer during the Utah Jazz pick and rolls. Whenever John Stockton needed an assist, Malone was his man. This, along with his longevity, helped him score the third most points in NBA history at almost 37,000. But despite multiple accomplishments in the regular season, Malone never seemed to get anything done in the postseason. He reached the finals twice, but Michael Jordan just happened to be there. With no titles, Malone is fittingly at number two. But the best power forward in league history is no doubt Tim Duncan. Remember earlier in this list when I mentioned how Dirk Nowitzki and Kevin Garnett had little playoff success? Well, most of this was due to Tim Duncan and his impact on the league. Tim Duncan didn't show a lot of emotion. He was a serious competitor whose only goal was to win. And that really showed, because the winningest team of the 2000s wasn't the Lakers or the Heat or the Pistons. It was the San Antonio Spurs, a small market team led by Duncan. The big fundamental was a consistent scorer in 19 seasons, who always passed to his teammates and led his team to victory. This unselfish style of play gave Duncan two MVPs and a whopping five championships on the San Antonio Spurs. Neal with the help, takes it to the basket, Duncan a three-pointer, puts it up, it's good! 